afternoon or good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to the show. This is episode four of the conversation with Sky Women. Women who have fallen victim to various kinds of online scams. And in some instances, they've not only lost millions in the process, but they've lost their dignity, they've lost their support system, and in many of the cases, these women have also been alienated from their families through the experience. If you're watching the show and you believe that you are immune, if you believe that these women were simply stupid, perhaps you'd like to listen to their stories. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the show. I am your host, Brigitte Limbanda. Sky Woman is a nonprofit formed by Louise Haynes, who researched various forms of scams over the last three years. And one of its key focuses is education and empowerment. She discovered that the victims selected by the scammers are generally single women, they're middle-aged, and very often they are business owners. The scam artists are professionals with a very thorough selection process. They have access to spyware, they disguise their accent, they use fake profiles, and they steal the identities of others. They come across as very genuine, sincere, and often, almost always, have a high-profile profession. Our guest today is Anne Hibbert, and this is her story. Anne is a registered debt counsellor. And at the time of her divorce, she worked for a company as a debt administrator and debt counselor. She was the area manager for the company. After her divorce and getting scammed, she says she lost more than just money. She found herself unemployed for three years. She attempted to start her own business as a debt counselor, but failed because she had no funds. Let's hear her story. Anne, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good to have you here. So, Anne, walk us through what happened to you. What, at what point in your life did you get scammed? Well, it was after my divorce. Um, I got divorced for personal reasons. I felt that my, my husband then did not give enough attention to me, and I felt... Um, very unloved and I tried to force his hand in changing his attitude towards me and and that that failed and we didn't fight for the divorce so I ended up being a divorcee with two teenage or almost grown children and um, after the divorce I, I was looking for something I was looking for attention I was looking for love I was craving love I was craving attention um something that I didn't have because his family was, I felt his family was more important than what I was. We just moved to Port Elizabeth. I didn't have any friends. Um, we only had his family here. Uh, so after the divorce, I was alone. Um, in the work that I did, I only dealt with the, the locals, the African people. Um, I didn't have friends of my culture, of my age or anything like that. So I started looking at dating sites, trying to find somebody we I could connect to. And I found a few guys I was chatting to, and then the one guy um, contacted me uh, and said that he'd seen my photo and he fell in love immediately, and um, I was his dream woman, and he just started telling me everything I wanted to hear. Um, how beautiful I was, and I didn't feel beautiful at the time. Um, I just felt like, um, well, if I'm not beautiful, if I'm not, if I'm not desirable, then if I was, then my husband wouldn't have 
left me. Um, he would have fought for me. And um, so I started chatting to him. Um, and he didn't so how any... long? How long was it before? How long did this your exchanges with him continue before it got to the point where he started asking you for money? And what was the story? Um, well, we started. We, we were chatting for about I think two or three weeks, um, and then he was going to come to Port Elizabeth to meet me, but he had to go to UK. It was a um, gold and semi-precious stone dealer. And he had to unexpectedly go to the UK for an exchange. And then it was just after Christmas where he said his daughter was still at school, at boarding school, and he didn't have funds to um, send for, for food or anything like that. And he asked me if I could help send her, oh, it was like 500 Rand at the beginning, and then the next week it was 1,000 Rand. Um, and I didn't have money at the time, so I sold my jewelry. I sold my wedding ring so that she could have food. And then she phoned me and thanked me and said that her dad had told her so much about me. And um, she felt that I was a new mom and she was so excited to meet me because as soon as he got home, he was going to bring her down to meet me and we were going to be a happy family. And and, and, and what got me was that he had, he had phoned me a few times as well, even while he was in the UK. And he had an Irish accent. And I've always had this thing about the Irish. Um, so that for me was it was it was a cool thing. And um, yeah, they, after that he started asking for more money because he uh, his um, goods could not be released from um, customs, and and the mouse just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then he was in an accident, and he had to pay the hospital bills. And then he got kicked out of the accommodation where he was staying because you couldn't pay and the amounts just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And when I told him that I didn't have money, he started getting upset. And somehow he cottoned on to the fact that I was getting my divorce settlement. And he'd hung me every day, when was this money coming through? When was this money coming through? He'd pay me back as soon as he got back to South Africa. Um, he even sent me a passport. He sent me um, the, the release papers for the, for the goods. And I started getting suspicious on that. And I Googled that and I saw the exact same passport that he'd used and just copy and pasted his photo in on, on Google. Um, but by that time, I had already sent him money um, when I discovered that I had been scared. It was like everything happened so quickly. Um, yeah, and how much money was involved at that point? Um, when when i lost money to him i had already started chatting to another guy who was going to saudi and um I, i'd sent him a hundred thousand rand at the beginning also the same kind of story you got caught and he had to send me money um so i'd sent him a hundred thousand rand and then another hundred thousand and then to this guy in the uk when he found out that i'd sent the other guy money he was upset with me and i cried on his shoulder because i thought i'd lost money it was like a vicious circle and then he was upset with me and said, well, you'd come home and help me find this other guy, but he needs to get home. And I need to send him money so that he could get home. And then send him a whole lot of money. And in the end, I lost 400,000 rand. So just for the sake of clarity here, you found yourself in a situation where you were being scammed by two separate men simultaneously. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And... Um, when I discovered that I'd been scammed, I felt double stupid. Um, if it was just one guy that I'd lost money to, I would have thought, okay, I would have seen my error. But to be scammed by two guys at the same time and I didn't see the red lights, um, it, yeah, I just, I couldn't believe that I actually fell for it twice in the same period. So, and looking back, if we, you know, looking back in retrospect if you unpack the situation now what would you say to yourself looking back well where i'm at now is don't trust me uh, i still haven't recovered from that part but um for any other woman that um is looking for love um is looking for attention 
produce fine, these dating sites are fine, but you don't exchange anything other than conversation with them unless you have met them in person and um, that you know that they are uh, who they say they are. And even then it's also not always the case, but make sure that the person is who he says he is. Um, don't just take his word. Um, and for the men out there, the, there's women that does exactly the same thing. Make sure that that person is legitimate. Don't just take their word. Um, I would never just take any man's word ever again. And what was it about the person's profile on, on Facebook that made you want to connect with them? Um, it wasn't so much their profile. Um, it was where I was at emotionally um, because of the divorce and I felt very unloved and it was just the fact that they were this sweet talking, um, oh, what's the right word? They were just very smooth. So, so at, smooth, that point, yeah. at that point, um, why did you, what prevented you from reaching out to someone that was in your real life and say, this is what happened, this is who I met, what stopped you from asking a real friend in your life? Um, I didn't tell anybody about it for about probably a month. Um, and when I eventually did tell somebody, the um, reaction I got was, how could you be so stupid? How do you give money to somebody that you don't know? How do you give 400,000 rand to somebody that you've never met? You are so stupid. How could you do that? So, um, and that was people that was close to me. Um, not, not family, because my, my family doesn't really know. My, my daughters still don't know that I've lost almost half a million rand. Um, so it was people in my friendship circle. How did that make you feel at the time? Uh, even more stupid. Um, it, to me, it felt like I was absolutely no good. Um, I couldn't even make a, a decent business decision. Uh, so if I can't... If I can't deal with my own money, how am I supposed to deal with other people's money? So it also affected my work, um, where I just I just couldn't deal with other people's finances either. It was not just my own finances, but others as well, and my own emotions, everything. And if somebody is watching this uh, show right now, and um, they are in a situation where they suspect that they are being scammed, what is your advice to them? Um, double check everything. If they send you photos of documents, um, double check it. If they send you letters, double check it. Um, I phoned, I, I, or I tried to phone um, the customs department in connection with the letter that this guy sent me for the gold that were to be released. They'd never heard of this guy. So I started doing my homework, but it was too late. Um, but double check everything. Um, it's it's basically it's a case of don't trust anybody on a dating site. Um, if you really are so desperate for love, if you're really so desperate for people, meet them in person before you do anything else. Um, don't just go on their word. And did you report your your case to the police? And what was their response if you did? Um, I reported to the police and they told me they can't deal with it. It's got to go to commercial crime. Um, and I spent like two days trying to get to them and then they were busy and eventually I got to speak to somebody that could take the case. Spent the whole day um, in his office and um, giving my statement. And his response was basically, I don't think you will ever see your money because this has happened to so many people and we don't know how to get hold of them. Um, and you were actually kind of really stupid to do that. And he said to me, they managed to get one lady's money back and um, within a week she had paid it out to another scammer. So they don't really have any hope for us getting the money back. And they had sent somebody to Joburg to where the guy had um, where I paid the money to. And in um, Hilbra they knew who the guy was but they could do nothing to actually catch him. So the people in the area knew who he was, 
and the police knew who the guy was, but they um, didn't have any um, way to actually catch him. Do you now have a support system to help you move forward? And how important um, would you say that support system is? Um, I'm living with somebody at the moment. Um, he still says to me he can't understand how I could be so stupid to have actually given the money to somebody else. Um, financially, I'm absolutely ruined. I have not been able to work for three years because I had no self-confidence. I go for interviews and I actually blow the interview because I had no self-confidence. Um, but my, my support system is basically my kids and this guy I'm living with, even though he still feels that I was stupid to, to give the money to somebody else. My last question to you, Anne, is do you feel that the social media platforms should have any uh, form of responsibility for your experience and the experience of other women? Um, I think there is a place for that. Um, I think what we are doing now at Sky Woman and what you are doing will uh, create a big awareness for what is going on there. But I don't think that place like Facebook even cares if people get scammed or not. I don't think um, the dating sites like the Do really cares. And all these other dating sites, I don't think they really care at all. For them, it's about money because you've got to pay to be a member there and they don't care what happens behind the scenes. For anyone who's watching now, um, it's important to know that the scam artists are not just on one particular social media platform. Uh, we've, yeah. se we've seen reports of um, this happening on every single social media platform, even yes. on a business platform like LinkedIn. Yes. Um, you know, it happens everywhere. There's mm -hmm. no, there's no, it's, it's not just on Facebook. Um, because it seems to be the first thing people talk about is, you know, it's only for, it's not just Facebook. It's not just it's, Facebook, no. It's on all the social media platforms. Any final words? Um, yes. <laughs> um, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, yes, you feel stupid when you've been scammed. Um, everybody gets scammed for a different reason. For me, it was, I had not given my finances when the divorce money paid out i had i was far from god i did not um dedicate my money to god so i lost it because it was not god's money and um since then i have actually asked god that if there's any way that he could find a way to get me some of the money back um but if i don't get any of the money back I know that I'm a better person now and I feel better about myself. I've managed to pick myself up from where I was. Um, I'm moving forward. I'm in a job that I, that I enjoy. Um, it's, the, it's a junior post. I'm almost 50 years old, but it's a junior post. Um, but I'm giving 100% in that job and I know that at the, I'm going to move forward in that job. Um, for me, it is... Um, if I can do it, you can do it too. And if you need help, reach out. There's people that care. It might not be the people that's close to you. They might not understand, but there is somewhere, there's somebody that cares. You've just got to find that person and don't keep quiet. I think that's probably the biggest lesson um, that I've that's come through from, from the women that we have interviewed so far and that have shared this story. Um, is come forward, don't keep quiet. It's the only way that we're going to shed some light on this and create awareness. So, Anne, I want to thank you very much for sharing your story and I wish you well on your journey of recovery. Thank you very much and everything for the best to all of you ladies out there and the gentlemen that are watching, all of the best. Let's, let's get them. Thank you, Anne. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Please do share to create awareness around this issue um, of people getting scammed. For now, it's goodbye from me, Bridgette Limbanda in Cape Town.